Hello, my name is Eric James. I'm one of the partners at James and & Whitney, and we're here with uh, Jay Russo, a special guest. We have a terrific business relationship, and uh, it feels sometimes more like a friendship. Mm. So I've always believed that everything in life kind of happens for a reason, and I was at one of the storage properties um, that I own, and uh, Jay showed up to store some Harley Davidson motorcycles, and I happened to be a rider uh, myself, and we just kind of connected, and it turns out uh, he's in the same industry as we are at James and & Whitney, and uh, we hit it off, and you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a story to tell since that day that we met at the storage facility. My name is Jay Russo. I'm the owner of Russo's Handyman and Renovation Services. Uh, I've been doing it for about 14 years now. Um, had s many, many years in, I'll say, the corporate life. And uh, then started getting into working on uh, real estate and making improvements to uh, real estate that I acquired. And so I got this little knack of trying to make things look really good. Uh, that maybe someone neglected after a while. Uh, and then started getting more into uh, the, the handyman side. So I formed Russo's Handyman Services. And then it evolved into Russo's Handyman and Renovation Services. So what we pride ourselves on is just really good quality work. We know what we do well. We know when we have to partner with others that can bring another level of experience and expertise to to a job, uh, whether that's roofing, whether it's tile, whether it's uh, working with um, uh, French drain systems and trying to make uh, the basements habitable. So the best thing to do is, as we all know, it's been a challenging market in trying to bring in uh, staff and new employees is I would go to the ones that are already existing that know how to do that job well and bring them in as a partnership. So we've been doing it now uh, mostly down in southern Maine, really handling from Kennebuck up to Falmouth, really heavily concentrated in Scarborough and Cape Elizabeth and Falmouth. And uh, we got a great crew, but we again, we want to put out the best product possible and when we are able to partner with companies such as James and Whitney, it just brings another level of expertise uh, that separates us from the rest of the competition. So the day that Jay and I met at the storage facility, he was unloading his bikes and I was seeing that he got them safely in the climate controlled units. And he told a story um, of an experience where he tried to utilize our exteriors division uh, for a particular service and we were not able to deliver this particular time. So I, I could tell Jay was somebody that we'd like to align with in business and I went to my team, shared the story and um, really we've done so much since then. It's, mm -hmm. It was certainly uh, worthwhile and I, I think there's a lot of value in uh, for Jay's company and for James and Whitney to have a sort of strategic um, alliance, the symbiotic relationship, because you know not every job is going to be a perfect fit for um, his crew, and not every job is going to be a perfect fit for ours. But that being said, there's a lot can happen through collaboration, and everyone at the end can get taken care of, get what they want. So I think that's really what's happened. We've had a lot of successful projects. He has happy customers. Um, we appreciate the business that you've brought us. Um, so it's been really a successful alliance. And you bring up a good point, collaboration. When you're trying to partner your business with another business, there's always hesitation, some reservation. You wanna know who you're kinda gonna be working with. But I, I kinda, you know, feel the same way like there was there was that that connection there whether it was the harleys whether it was hey we're just you know two guys looking to to bring a, a good product to market um and uh it was just at the opportune time you know things do happen for a reason that i had a current vendor uh that i was using a subcontractor that just wasn't cutting it and in comes you know james and whitney gave him a shot and was just um impressed 
right after that first one that we lost because you didn't you know know about it but then you made the phone call people started calling me the communication was key you know really Johnny on the spot getting the right numbers putting together a, a competitive package uh, and it was just let me try this once all right I like it let me try it again now couple hundred thousand dollars of business later mm -hmm. and we probably got millions to come right. so cheers to that hey cheers <laughs> definitely yeah. yes and i just want to say um jay mentioned communication yeah. that word is so powerful but over uh, my two decades in this industry i think it's particularly important in the way it relates to our industry mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. generally um, from my experiences, uh, the, the people in the trades aren't necessarily always the best communicators. I can be one of those myself, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very powerful. And, um, I, I just, the mindset that Jay has in regards to, you know, aligning strategically, but doing it with caution mm -hmm. because your, your customers, that's all you have for your business. They need to be yeah. taken care of in a certain mm -hmm. way. Um, but so we we feel flattered that Jay trusts us with his customers, and I hope to continue to be able to take care of them right. very well. So thank you, you. You're welcome. And you mentioned something really unique there, which is the communication. Which the communication, not only the good, but the bad. Right. There is there are things that come up, you know, in our jobs. I don't think I've ever been on a job that it went as a hundred percent as planned. There's always the surprises. But what I've been told by my customers, and you probably experienced the same thing, is that to be able to communicate the bad just as well as the good separates us from 90% of the competition. How many times have we heard stories about you know, people paying a contractor and then they just disappear? Uh, you know, and I have done that several times where I've apologized for others in my industry, apologized to the trade. I said, but we're not all like that. And give me a chance to show you that one by Apple doesn't destroy our industry. And then that communication, that collaboration, to be able to put a good product at the end. And, you know, really, when is a customer happy? Not at the end of the job, when something maybe happens after the job and you are come right there and you fix it. And, you know, outside of warranties, I've done work outside of warranties because that customer is not, to me, is not a one job customer. That's a customer for life. And even though things are out of warranty, yeah, we'll do it right, make it right. It's because that's what, that's what our business is. It's business continuity and you can't burn bridges. Yeah, I agree with you. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we believe in and when we bring on a new product line or work with a new manufacturer or a vendor we always take care of the customer first, mm -hmm. and then we'll d determine, was it a manufacturer's issue? Was it a labor or, or trades issue? Mm -hmm. But take care of the customer. We can figure that out on the back end. The last thing we want to do is say, well, it's at fault of the shingle, or it's at fault of the siding, or whatever it may be. If you value your customers the way you do, and mm -hmm. I believe we do, um, your company will continue forever. Yeah. I believe that. So do I. Yep. I, I think I'd like to throw in my experience with the sales rep, project manager. I don't know how you the project schedule. I don't know where like and you got Andrew, a manager. You got you got uh, Jeremy. You got um, all, all the project managers I have, but. It's like, to your benefit, a lot of customers don't see that. And I think in, in this kind of environment that we're talking from, you know, business owner to business owner, I'm not Johnny homeowner, but I think it's imperative and I think it would be a good thing for you to share about is kind of behind the scenes. What all, you know, people, the customers, they see you show up, they see you do the job, you see the leave. But you know what? That one day roof took weeks of, of preparation of cost, estimating, finding what's available, what's not, best product, come out and visit. There's a lot. I like that you open the door for me to elaborate on that. Yeah. Um, and I refer to it as the customer journey. Mm. From the time 
Uh, one of our customers needs a roof, siding, windows, a deck, whatever it may be, even a service that we can offer. It's still, we can refer it off, we can try to be helpful, but um, really we do believe that our processes ev are, are very, very good. They're tailored mm -hmm. to take care of the customer. Um, I'd like to thank our GM, Ryan, for putting these processes in place and the, the whole team, their feedback, and we, as much as we think that we're very good at what we do and our processes are great, we also, every one of us, believe we can always be better. Yeah, so we're perfect. Right, yeah. we don't want to be complacent. We're always just trying so hard to tailor the customer journey, the customer experience, the processes, and I think it's, it's working. You know, the Google five-star reviews show that mm. it's working and uh, the testimonials. So, but thank you for, uh, for yeah. recognizing, you know, yeah. that our processes I, I, I do, are good. I do see that it takes a lot of effort and there's many moving parts because I see it every day. And then that's why I brought it up because the customer doesn't see that. They just see people showing up, materials get unloaded, bang, 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 we leave and job's done. Right. And they don't understand what goes into securing the best vendor, you know, of a product. Something that's really going to be custom, tailored, designed to meet the customer's need. You know, in our industry, we get people who just say, I'm, I'm going to sell Anderson Windows because Anderson's giving me a great deal. But there might be something better. And we don't have those blinders on. We go out there and we meet with the customer, find out what their needs are, what their budget is. And then we, we make the best decision for them. We're not going to push what we have the best deal on. It's really putting that customer's need, saying, this is what we're going to do. We've heard you. We've listened. And this is what we have to do. You've probably been in the same instance that I've been in where I'm not the cheapest quote, but I win the business because they know that this this new transaction, this sale, this customer acquisition process is not just give me the check, I do the job, I'm on to the next one. It's every time I look at a customer and get a new customer, I'm always in communication with them. They become friends. Right. You know, we go out to dinner with them, we sure. have fun, we go to games, we go eat oysters and do whatever. But, you know, I, I, my company specifically, I don't do a lot of marketing. The only thing I ask is, hey, who can you share your experience with? And they give me, oh, this person, that person, this person. And I'm like, okay, stop, because I don't have that many people to meet all the demand of all these people. But the areas that we're in, uh, it is, it really is on that customer feeling confident and being able to put their name on my business as a referral. Because our we're, in human nature is, if someone's done you wrong, you tell 10 people. And it's so hard in our industry that if you do something right, to get one. But that one and the next one, if you can get two, great. It's just, it keeps the wheels moving. And when you build a good reputation like that, uh, it, it really helps us focus on putting out a better product, putting out uh, uh, just... Uh, a better customer service experience. And and I can tell just from the feedback from our team mm. that you're very sincere mm. about taking care of your clients mm. and you have some you've you have cultivated some terrific relationships. The projects that we've partnered on yeah. from what I've heard from the team are just terrific projects. They all yeah. have gone very well and at the end everyone's happy yeah. and that's for that's very fulfilling, you know. Yeah for me and everyone on our team, so. Sure, sure, exactly, and it's, it, uh, you, you know, there are, you, you get the customers that, they're, they're challenging. Yes. Um, but again, I think it gives us an opportunity that when we're challenged, is really when we show our true colors and what we're really about and how we can differentiate ourselves. You know, when, you know, that customer calls with a concern, like I had today, it was a quick phone call to Steve to say, hey, by the way, this happened, and we're we're on it, right? And you know it's uh, it's good to know that, and customers do see that as, you know, they sometimes fear the worst when something happens 
and maybe that's the condition, maybe they've had a bad experience with another contractor, but I almost make it my duty, my obligation to say, if you've had a bad experience with a contractor, yes, I'm sorry, but give me a chance to make our trade look better in your mind. And, uh, and then, if, of course, if we can come in under, under budget, <laughs> yeah. they like that. Of you know, course, it's, yes. uh, you know, that That's important. Uh, I haven't encountered um, a customer yet that doesn't enjoy saving money when they can. Yeah. And your um, thought in regards to challenging mm. customers, um, I just look at it as a testament of our ability to service them. Mm. And one of the members of our team, I don't know if you've had the pleasure of working with Brandon Crute. He's mm -hmm. a project manager. Mm -hmm. And he told me a, a short story of, you know, when he gets to the job in the morning, he's an early riser. He's up at 4, 4.30 a.m. He's very organized, very prepared. And when he arrives on site, occasionally, um, he'll have a customer that is in that category of challenging. Maybe mm -hmm. they're not a morning person. Maybe they're not excited at that moment about the investment they're making in their home. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, Eric, I see it as as a, a challenge by the end of the day. I want to win that customer over. I want to Fair. give them a great experience. And I thought, what a what a great way to approach a situation like that, forward thinking, sure. provide the service, give them a good experience. So again, you know, these, uh, you know, these approaches with our clients is why probably we were very aligned and have a great yeah. relationship, your company with ours. Yeah, so true. Yeah.